Hey guys, it's May May, and do you remember when we made this box and I promised you I would be back to show you it with an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper? That's today. So we're gonna take this box that I did in 12 by 12, use a sheet of eight and a half by 11, and we are starting our month of masculine projects. I'm gonna do my best to bring you as many, I cannot promise how many, but as many masculine projects as I can in the month of June. All right, this dude right here is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and here, or card stock rather, and here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna score this, your first spot is gonna be at one and a half. Then your next score is five and one fourth. Then six and three fourths. And then the last score on this piece is gonna be 10 and a half. Now don't worry about those measurements and writing it all down. We're gonna have it in the blog post that'll be linked in the description below for you. Now we're gonna turn this in our scoreboard and now we have it on the shorter side, the eight and a half um, side. And now you're gonna score the top at three fourths of an inch, all the way down, three fourths of an inch. And the bottom gets scored at seven. Pretty easy score marks. Pretty easy, so there we go, all scored. You can see that, the camera's showing it real well, okay? Now let's do some cutting away of things we don't need. The first thing we definitely don't need is this little piece right down here. And let me show you how I'm gonna cut it away. I'm cutting the score mark off. A lot of times you ask me if I'm cutting in the ditch or if I'm cutting the mark away. This time, I'm cutting the mark off. And here, I'm gonna come in at an angle and cut that just like this. I'll show you as it comes away so you can see what we cut. That little angle helps us get rid of some bulk later on. Now on the rest of the bottom, what I want you to do is slice up, starting here. Now this piece and this piece will be the flaps that will show. So I wanna cut the score mark off of them. So just right beside my score mark, I'm running up my blade there. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. So all of these big flaps, we wanna cut the score mark off. Right there. Now, these small flaps, I want to make angle cuts on. So this is a way for us to be able to line everything up nice and smooth as we start to assemble. So I just come in here and just make these little snips on the angle, or on the smaller little flap, not the big guy. They don't all have to be uniform. You won't see them. They're just really an opportunity for us to get kind of some paper out of the way. All right, let me get my trash out of the way. So there's the bottom. That's what the bottom should look like. Now let's work on the top. Now, in my last video, I left these little flaps and used them as support, but this smaller version really doesn't need that. So what I'm gonna do is here on this line, I'm gonna cut the score mark away of this piece, just like this. And this piece we're gonna keep, okay? But the rest of these can all go away, cutting the score line off. So I don't need that little flap. And I don't need any of that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna use a different pair of scissors for that, because it's easier to use these long scissors for this. So I'm gonna slice all the way down to that big flap, just like so, okay? I'll lay this down so you can see it. I've got one more place to make an angle cut and it's right here, just like so to take a little more bulk out. So let's look at it. So this is gonna be your closing piece. This is that box that doesn't need any closure. It holds itself shut. And then this is all we need to assemble. All right, so you can get a good look at how that should look. Let's start folding our pieces. I'm gonna start with my flap on the end. I'm gonna fold it and crease it. And then I'm gonna bring this next fold line over and crease that one, just like so. Then the next one. And then I'm gonna come back this way and get this guy. And then I'm gonna do all the bottom and the top. So just lift these little guys up and crease them down. Oops, I got a little crooked on that one. That's okay, it's paper, I can train it back. So let's take it back the other way. And if I need to trim it, I can. If I get a little uh, a little off, lay that one down and crease it. That one down and crease it. And then finally this little guy. Now before I um, do any assembly, I need to do something to this top piece. While I can lay this flat, I want to do that. I want to lay this kind of flat like this and use my corner rounder, and I want to round the corners of this little edge right here. If you wait to do this until the box is assembled, you're not going to be able to get in there very good. Trust me, I've tried it. So I'm just going to do this, and that way I get my little corners rounded, and this will go into its um, home much easier. And now I need to crease that one as well. 
All right, so there we go. Now is the easy part, ready? You're gonna fold this guy over and that reveals that little flap, right? That's where some glue goes. So I'm just gonna add some glue there. Isn't this navy paper gorgeous? Oh, I love navy. Got a little glue where it didn't need to be. And then I'm just gonna fold this down and let it meet and then seal that shut. I love boxes that need very little work to close them and keep them in place. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit because I want that to be nice and sturdy, okay? So I don't wanna put any pressure on that just yet. It can sit like that and it's fine. Now I'm gonna tuck these two pieces in and because this is the front of my bag, I'm gonna push this guy in to be the back there. So just add a little glue and then close this down. Now I'm gonna stand this up and like I usually do, I'm gonna take my ruler or my bone folder and just sit down in there and squish that down so it'll all adhere well. So this bag is an inch and a half, which is good because you can put some pretty good sized treats in here. Maybe a necktie, some cookies, some candy. Maybe there's something that you make for your um, dad or husband or brother, that some kind of candy they like, this will hold a good bit. Now what you wanna do is you wanna press in at the top and you're just, this is so good, you can really see what's happening. You're just making those little angles and that will um, cause the box to give you a place to close it, okay? So you just do that, that's all there is to it. And line that up square. All right. Okay, so the way this box closes is this flap goes inside, just like so. Get where I can see it. Tuck it in and it holds the box closed for you. You don't need any adhesive. And the cool thing is if you're giving dad or your brother or somebody some candy, they can just take a piece out and leave it in here and it seals up. Isn't that neat? Now I would suggest depending on what you're putting inside here, if you're putting like cookies or something that may have a little bit of an oil content, put it in a plastic bag, a, a food safe plastic bag first and then put it inside here because this paper will draw any oil out of something like a baked good. Okay, now let's make it look like a shirt and make it super cute. All right, first things first. Okay, so now it's time to do a lot of stamping. <laughs> well, a good bit of stamping. And I'm gonna be using my Brutus Monroe Alabaster ink for this. I'm excited about it. Something a little different for you guys. All right, we're gonna be making a button placard to run down the front of the bag or of the treat bag. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of white that is three quarters of an inch. And then I cut a piece of blue that is um, half an inch. And I actually went a little fatter than half an inch, just a little bit to give myself a good bit of room there. And so I want to make stitch lines down this and we're gonna do it using our suspender stamp. So this is my suspender, right? And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our ink and I'm only gonna ink up from the buckle down. Okay, now when you're using this ink, I want you to remember this is a foam pad, okay? And the more you press, the more it gets inside and you can get a lot of bleed with this kind of foam pad, okay? So be super careful. Now I'm gonna try my best to do this without getting my head in the camera and I don't know how easy it's gonna be to line up. I'm gonna try to use the screen to help me and I'm using a press to make it even easier. So I'm just gonna press this down. Now don't over press, just let that ink kiss the navy so it'll show, look how cute it is, so we got stitches down there. Now I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing on the other end. Now I have a sample to show you at the end, if you'll stick around to the end where I used um, just black ink. So if you don't have white, I'll show you how it works with black ink on a different color too, so hang around for that. All right, so I'm gonna go down here, and I'm, listen, you do not have to be perfectly lined up, trust me, because I was, I did not get my first one perfectly lined up, and you couldn't tell, so don't stress about that. That will all, come out in the wash as they say. So just press that down. Now this ink, look at how cute that is and see how that's not perfect, it will go away, do not worry. Now this ink needs to dry and that's why I want to do all my stamping right now. So I'm just gonna take this little guy and put him over here for a minute and I'll move on to some more stamping. All right, we are going to be using the pocket as well as the cuff from our stamp set called Suit Up. I don't think I mentioned what stamp set I'm using. I should have. This is the set called Suit Up. I didn't even show you. Let me show you it. So this is the stamp set I'm using. I just wanna make sure I showed you. It's called Suit Up and it'll be linked in the blog post as well. Okay, so again, with the white ink, and I'm gonna take the ink to the stamp so I don't overpress. And you just want that ink to get on the, the lines of the stamp. You don't need to squish it down in, okay? And now I'm gonna stamp for myself a cuff just like so, letting that ink just kiss the page. And then I'm going to stamp, what else do I need? Oh, I need the pocket. So let's do that one as well. 
And then we have one more thing we're gonna stamp. So do the pocket like this. I won't be using the full pocket, I'll be using a part of it. So I'm just gonna stamp it there and we'll cut off what we don't need. All right, I'm gonna set this aside to dry. And now I'm gonna do the bow tie on some polka dot paper. I think this will be so cute. So I'm just going to ink this guy up in the white again. And stamp it down on my navy paper. I like the tone on tone look of this. It really turns out cute. Again, I'll show you in the sample I did to start with. It's cute. Oh my goodness, I love it. Okay, we need to go back to that first placard that we started with. Remember, I wanted to let that sit and dry for a second, so I wanna go back to this. And now we're gonna do something super fun and add a button. So on the set, we give you several buttons. We have two up here in the top, plus the bigger one at the bottom. I'm gonna use the larger of the two small ones here at the top. So with this button, and I'm going to eyeball this. If you need to make some measurements, you can. I'm not going to. I'm going to just eyeball this. I'm just going to ink that little button up. And then starting at the top, I'm just going to stamp it down. Just like so. And I'm going to work my way down the placard with the little, with the, is it a placard? Placard? I don't know. We're going to work our way down making buttons. <laughs> Somebody will tell me in the comments what it's called, I'm sure. I think it's a button placard. I could be wrong. See how I'm just eyeballing that? It's fine. It does not have to be perfect. We actually don't do perfect around here. We do pretty good, but we don't do perfect. Okay, so there's my button placard. Hope that's the right word. And now we can start assembling. We need to let those dry, so I'm going to set that aside and let that dry too. So while all of that is drying, I'm going to do some cutting out here. I'm going to cut out my pocket, I mean my cuff. This is my sleeve cuff, and I'm cutting it right to the line. So remember, let your ink dry. This is a pigment ink. It needs to dry. If you really want to make this cute and you have the time to do it, you can stamp it with this white pigment ink, and then you can put some white embossing powder over it and heat set it, and that would be really pretty. It would really pop on your on your navy. I think we're not going to have a problem with this popping off anyway. I think it's going to look really cute. Okay, so there's my cuff ready to go, and now I need to cut my pocket out. And now the bow tie. So something else I did was I cut myself just a rectangle of some navy cardstock of the same cardstock. This one, I cut down one and a half by one and three fourths, and that's gonna be what continues out my little shirt sleeve. So this will be the sleeve right here. And something I wanted to do to it before I put it on is I wanna ink the edges. Now I'm gonna do this very bravely. <laughs> and I'm gonna go straight from the ink pad, and I'm just gonna run the ink pad down one edge, See that, just to give myself a little bit of a line, and then down the other side, just to show a little bit of um, difference between the bag itself that we're making and the shirt. So I need to let that dry. Now the other thing I did was I lined these in white, and let me show you what I mean by that. So I took a little piece of white cardstock. I want everything to really pop, and I glued all my little stamp pieces down to the white, and then I trimmed them out to give them a layered effect. It was, it just really works. Then what I did was I just took a pair of scissors and I just trimmed right beside them. That's a little bit wider than I want. Let me trim that down a little bit. I just want a thin white line because when I'm laying all this navy on top of navy, I've really done um, kind of a, a tone on tone project here. When I'm laying this down, it really needs that pop to separate it from the treat bag. Now this may be overkill. You don't you don't have to do this. You can just leave it navy. The white ink will let it show, but I just like the pops of brightness. Another reason I outlined the bow tie, this bag, the bow tie is a tiny bit small. And if you leave it just the navy color that it's gonna be resting against, it kind of goes away. But when you add this white edge to it, it really makes it feel larger and makes it make more sense on the bag. So there's my pieces cut out. Now with this little guy, I need to glue him to here. What you need to decide is where you want your button to be. Um, I'm gonna be putting this on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna put my button down and place it here on this side of the little um, sleeve. So let me glue this down to it. And notice that I did not outline the sleeve. 
I don't have to. I don't want it to be a feature. I just want there to be a sleeve. So because I did that little white edging with the ink, it'll pop off the page anyway. And this way my sleeve almost looks like a French cuff or something. I think it looks really cool. All right, let's go back to the bag now. We can sort of start to assemble the bag, the treat box, whatever you want to call it. We need our little white strip of paper, our cardstock. All right, so we're going to glue the blue strip to the white strip that we cut to match. Just like so, just lining that up in the center. Like that. And then this piece gets glued to the middle of our treat bag. So glue down the center here. And then what I did, if I don't drop it, is I just kind of laid my bag sideways and eyeballed the center. And because I have a little bit of extra excess glue on there, I still have time to move it if I need to. So now I can just look at it and get it lined up. Super cute. Let's let that stick down for a second. Now you'll see on my first bag, I put the pocket on this side and I didn't like it. On this one that I'm making to, right now, I want the pocket on this side. And so what I wanna do is I wanna trim off one edge of this and I'm gonna use the stitches to be my guide. So from this stitch, let me cut it and then I'll show you which stitch it is. It'll make more sense. I'm just lining up that bottom stitch there to that top stitch there. And that's all I needed to take away. And now this can be glued down. But look, you could actually glue only three sides and make it a pocket and like slide a little note or something in it. Wouldn't that be cute to do that? I think it would. And that lands right to the edge of the treat bag, just like so. Then you're going to put your sleeve on. So I'm just going to glue down my little sleeve like this. And this guy's going to go over here. And he's pretty close. He got real tight, but that's okay. If you want to place him before you do your placard, you can do that. But I think this is super cute like this. And then our bow tie. And you can pop it up if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to glue it straight down. And you'll see here how adding the white really helps with the bow tie. Because the bow tie could be a little too small if we weren't careful. Because you can see it's pretty small up there. But adding that white really helps. And if you want to, you can let your little placard in behind the bow. I don't think it makes a difference. You still get the idea of what it is, right? Isn't that adorable? I just love how that turned out. So let me show you the first one I did, and you can see it done in a black and white or white stitching. Either one works. I think they're adorable. And these are great little gift or treat boxes for dad. And can you imagine if you left that open and you put a little note inside of there for him? Wouldn't that be cute? He could pull that out. And you can always add a panel to the back and treat it like a greeting card and put um, stamps or sentiment or anything there. I love these little bags. I hope you do too. They're bags or boxes, whatever you want to call them. They feel like a bag, but they're made like a box. Hey, here's the deal. If you make them, you know I want to see them. So do me a favor and head to my website at maymaymadeit.com and under our customer gallery, share photos of what you're doing with this stamp set and your Father's Day treats. I really want this month to be all about masculine projects. If I can do it, I just don't want to promise it because that was a lot of projects for the month, but I'm going to try my best. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video so your friends can see it as well. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.